cut out and sand the plywood base for the chairs. Then you have to rough up everything that you're going to glue so it will stick. Trimming off anything sticking out of the bottom of the chair so that the plywood will fit better. With the recess already cut in the bottom of the plywood, fitting it to make sure that it fits fairly tight before gluing. We glued the bottom of the chair using Gorilla Glue and we also screwed it down and weighted it with bricks and as it dries the foam, it foams and expands and now we're trimming off the extra foam. Cutting some straps out of the uh, old rocker that was on the bottom of the gaming chairs. We're going to use these to strap the chair backs onto the base. Again, sanding everything to rough it up so we have a better chance of a better adhesion. Pre-drilling holes for rivets. Wiping everything down with alcohol to make sure that there's no grease or anything on it. Drilling into the chair for the rivet. Using a rivet to pin the first hole so that um, we can line up all the other holes. We labeled all the plates so that we won't mix them up when we're actually epoxying them and riveting them on in a few minutes. Using a five minute epoxy, spreading it out on both surfaces so we have a good adhesion. Thank you. 
the one stainless steel rivet we used, I couldn't break it off, so we had to cut it off. Putting a coat of flat black on the wood so that if you see it, it wouldn't look bad. Touching up the rivets. Installing the base, uh, salvaged off of some other recycled chairs. Filling in the crack with a seam with uh, some black caulk and wiping it out with my fingers so it's nice and smooth. Well, I did a couple of tests with the different kind of paint. Uh, down here is just straight uh, the, uh, the, um, the fluorescent blue. This is a white primer and brushed on uh, fluorescent blue water base. All that was water base. This is a water base primer with uh, the, um, the fluorescent blue paint going on top of it. And over here is a, a different blue paint, just regular paint that's made to stick to plastic. And then while it was still wet, I went back and sprayed the fluorescent blue on top of that. And this is covered the best, and this is the one I'm going to go with, right here. Now it's been kind of a nightmare to tape this sucker up, because uh, even though I wiped it all down with alcohol, you can see the edges of the tape it keeps coming up. And I taped up a lot of this last night, and if I could have sprayed it last night, I would have, because at that time it was pretty much down. But anywhere I look, you can see it coming up a little bit, so I... I'm going to have to be real careful and hopefully there won't be too much mess getting underneath it. Now this is what I'm using. The first coat is this. It's paint and primer in one. It spawns to wood, metal, and plastic. And this is the fluorescent blue that I'm going to use on top of it. i to make sure I grab the right can. I'm already shaking it up a lot. And I'm just going to give it a quick mist. I need to move this other chair out of the way because I do not want it to get misted. Oops, missed the spot where I didn't cut the tape. Right here. It's a bit hard to get in these little holes. But I figured I'm going to be giving it several coats so maybe it will cover by the time I'm done. So that's the one coat with um, the West Oleum primer in one. Now on the first chair, when I taped it up, I used a thin tape, and I tried to kind of go around the edge of this with the edge, and that's how I would normally tape something, but the problem with that is because you're twisting the tape, and a lot of times it added more pressure and caused, helped cause the tape to come loose. So this time I'm not even worried about it, I'm just going to go like that, get my fingernail in there good. Use the wider tape so I can get a bigger area. And I've switched to this is an exterior tape, so I'm hoping it's a little more sticky. And I think this is going to save a lot of time because I spent a lot of time on the other one. And because it's curved, you can't really use a really big piece. Because it, like right now, I've got most of it, and over here, I got none of it. And then, after you've got your fingernail in the edge, good. You can kind of see now the tops, the corners are always kind of a pain. Good sharp razor blade, and I'm just gonna carve around where my fingernail was. 
the hard part it's kind of hard to see because of the shadows of your hand and the lights and all that stuff and I normally don't like to tape this way I like to tape to the edge but I had so much bad luck with the other one that's why I went with this and you just peel it off Another thing is when you start to tape the inside up, I think it helps to, as it goes on, it might help pull it away. But it just doesn't really stick that good to this plastic. And then you just kind of follow the line. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. A little bit of an impression. The nice sharp razor blade, it's not too difficult. Except for the cutaway on the top. And you gotta kinda stab it, find an edge, and pull it off. You also wanna pull it off carefully because you don't want just to peel it in case you didn't get the cut good enough. Try to get it without peeling too much off. I'm using a much thicker tape for the middle. It's much faster. And if I get this painted today, most of my tape should still be on and shouldn't be curling up too much. Which was the main flaw with the stuff I taped up yesterday. You can still see it coming up in a few places. Tape just doesn't like to stick to this plastic. Now just a little bit of note on the side. The Falcon 9, the first one ever, is about to launch in about 10 minutes, literally in my backyard, so I'm going to pretty much get this taped up, but I'm not going to spray it probably until after the launch. And I'm using a tape machine to peel the paper off, because it makes it a lot easier. It's not very accurate taping, but for what I'm doing, it's perfect. Wait a little bit, slide it around. Now I'm going to do the back side. Don't want to overspray lofting around the back and sticking to the back, so I got to protect it. Falcon 9 is a go. Taking off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Right into the clouds. Perfect for viewing. Well, maybe not, but oh well. Probably good to tape right here just to keep it from coming off. There you go. Continue it around. It's only been about a half hour or so since I painted. You really should probably wait like several hours before you unpaint, but I never do. Paint a car, I just start taking it off. Now what I'm worried about is overspray that gets under the tape. I want to get it off while it's still soft enough that I can take some mineral spirits and get it off if I need to. dry to the touch but you know if you you could very easily cut it with a fingernail or stick tape on it and pull a piece off so you've got to halfway be careful all together I have one heavy coat of the blue paint that's the primer in one and then I got probably three ish coats of the fluorescent blue
fact that the chair swivels doesn't make it any easier. It'd be easier if it didn't swivel. And I got a little overspray right down here, a little spot, a piece of tape. Something right there. A little bit over here I got underneath. Might be able to just scrape them off. Now I got a little bit of tape that came off in the corner here, a little too much. And a little kind of wobbly there, but that's alright. A little bit kind of rough at the corners here, it wasn't really that smooth. But overall, they're going to be good enough. A little bit sharp right there. I can maybe scrape that off a little bit and make it a little more rounded.